So you've just heard, welcome for, to the second day, um, and you've just heard from Sanaz, and you know now why the patient safety movement has changed so much in our team uh, over the last uh, year or so. Um, Sanaz is the engine room uh, behind everything that's been going on, uh, and she has single-handedly, with help from the two crinkleys, uh, to, to, come, to come up, to come up uh, with a program that everyone uh, will enjoy and learn from, and as I mentioned yesterday, uh, listen to. Whenever I leave home, I'm surrounded by my family. Uh, Sue, who I first met uh, when we were children. Uh, she was eight and I was 11. Uh, parents were very good friends. We then grew up, we went to different colleges, got married, and were lucky to have traveled all over uh, the world. Uh, we worked in the UK and the US, and indeed when we arrived here in Connecticut um, with Luke and Jack, we left with another two in Jamie and Ellen. It must have been the Yale Water uh, at the time. Jamie now lives in Charleston uh, with Hannah and Freddie, and, and Ellen, or Nell, uh, as the boys call her, uh, is about to get married uh, on July 1st in Portugal. Uh, so you can probably say I'm practicing my speech now. <laughs> uh. So Ellen is marrying Rishab, or Rish, uh, to Ellen and his friends. Uh, not our new UK Prime Minister, uh, but an equally brilliant and lovely young man. Uh, he was born in Essex, and became a professional sportsman, cricketer, uh, before going to the badlands of finance. Sorry, apologies to the finance uh, teams here. Um, his mother was from Gujarat in India, uh, and his father from Kenya. Luke, our eldest son, married Susanna, whose father fled Iran. And Jamie uh, married Hannah, a wonderful woman from Annapolis, whose parents were from Iowa and DC, and whose grandparents were from Sweden and Italy. So we're a global family. The Durkins are a global family. And we need our movement here today for patient safety to be a global family. Wherever we've come from, we've raised the flag and awareness that we need to reduce deaths and harm to, in, from avoidable errors in healthcare, everywhere we go. But we've consistently failed to make a significant headway and reducing the, into reducing those deaths and harms. Why? We heard yesterday of so many brave and in individuals who are trying to change. Why? Because we haven't worked together across the globe. We've been sliced, siloed in our systems as well as in our campaigns. We've been precious in trying to promote one model, usually our personal or organizational model or solution, rather than working together to change the response. We have IHI, ISHQA, the Joint Commission, Joint Commission International, WHO, as well as ourselves at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, trying to ensure a collective movement to reduce harm. We also have the collective wisdom and force of many specialty organizations and societies, particularly in anesthesia, surgery, maternal health and public health, influencing and determining standards and training curricula, recognizing the importance and imperative to bring about appropriate human factors or ergonomic, ergonomic solutions. We have a multi-dimensional problem, and as Liam said, reminded us yesterday, in a complex adaptive system of healthcare. And we need a multi-dimensional approach to ensure that all parties can work together, despite the difficulties that that may at first be apparent. In particular, and those of you who listened last night to the Bleed Out film, in particular, we need the healthcare professions, the legal profession, and our lawmakers to see a common goal of reducing harm and deaths is in everyone's interest, and not just as a financial opportunity. We now have a truly global network of patients and their families working to support each other, as well as their national systems. 
and many of their leaders are here. Yes, we're here yesterday and are here today, and you heard a fantastic panel discussion yesterday afternoon. But I agree with Sue, as we need to be much more proactive in providing our patients their advocacy and activism with the skills and solutions to bring about change and improvement in their own domains. A core goal for us all is to bring about a psychologically safe space to work together, to be truly candid and transparent when we seek an answer to what and why something went wrong. Those drawbridges need to be lifted back up again. As taught by Avedis, and I mentioned yesterday Avedis Donabadian, the secret to bring about successful change is not just about the systems and processes, but it's the harnessing the power of the ethical values who work within the system. Through the work of this foundation, we've also worked hard to bring about a consensus of action from medical technology and devices companies to be transparent in their work through Joe and his foundation so that all systems can learn and improve at the same pace. The pandemic taught us to work in a different way, to use all modalities and techni technologies to bring about solutions to support our families and the public in every setting and especially at home. Our role for patient safety now must move out of hospitals and across our whole dimensions of care. We need to embrace that technology and adopt good governance and cybersecurity methods. We also need to harness the power, as we heard yesterday, of generative AI and machine learning to be to the advantage of our patients and our decision making, but recognizing the difficulties that that will present. As I was talking to colleagues earlier today, what we, we get out, what we put in. The clue is in the name, generative. We have also recognized the need to harness not only expert knowledge to bring about evidence-based solutions, but also financial and fiscal instruments to engineer change and improvement through the work of the World Bank, the OECD, and in recent years, the Academy of Medicine. Our summit has brought together the architects for change. We have here the leaders who have not accepted the status quo, but who have identified what needs to be done to improve the safety of our patients, and now more, more so, and also the safety and physical and mental health of our healthcare staff. We now have the global series of ministerial summits in patient safety, bringing together the political leaders who are responsible for implementing policy and effective policies in their respective countries. This year in Montreux, saw the largest collaborative political leaders in healthcare sign the Montreux Charter. And we will hear more from that from Anthony Staines, who led the expert team for the summit later today. We now have the Global Patient Safety Action Plan brought together by Saliam and Dr. Neelam Dingra, who you heard from yesterday, for the, uh, and adopted by the World Health Assembly, which lays out the framework for a decade of improvement. Our role now is to work as humanly possible to bring about an implementation plan at a local, at a system, and at a national level to put that into place. We need to make it a reliable and resilient plan with the patient, their family, and the caregiver at the center of every solution. We are here to serve our patients, and we need to do that appropriately. One that allows the healthcare provider also the space and permission to act in the best interests of their patients and their colleagues. So thank you for your efforts to come here today. Thank you also for your efforts to bring about change and improvement wherever you work. But most of all, uh, thank you for what you are about to do and for what you will achieve for your families, your patients, and your colleagues. So thank you very much for listening to me. I'll stop now and uh, welcome the rest of the day. Thank you.